Welcome everyone to Diversified, where our mission is to have you live in a life filled with wealth, health, and happiness. Today, we have a very special guest, the one and only Matt Lieberman, the VP of Residential Lending at Apex Home Loans. Matt and his team help home buyers build their future wealth through first-time home purchases, refinancing, or moving into their dream homes. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Thanks so much for having me, Andrew. Great to be nice. here. Absolutely. So what got you into the mortgage and lending business? Uh, well, Andrew, uh, like a lot of people, you, you some, some just fell into it. Um, uh, had a good family friend that uh, was a realtor and uh, said that there was an opening in her office for an assistant to a loan officer. Didn't even know what a loan officer was at that point, but I uh, decided to, at 22 years old, decided to take that job and run with it. So it's been 19 years later and uh, still, still doing it. So what have you learned, Matt, over those 19 years of home lending that, I mean, you, you, you lend money for a living, right? But what have you learned about people and their happiness and how this world, the home lending happy house world, all intersects? Absolutely. So I think owning a home is really gives you a sense of accomplishment, um, both personally and, and really financially. Um, we see so many advantages of owning a home, um, you know, just from building wealth, just from just from paying down the principal of a loan um, at low borrowing rates. Even even today, where rates are a little bit higher than they have been in the past at, you know, around six and a half percent. That's a great hedge against inflation. Um, so also in the last 30 years, um, we've seen the 300 nationally, we've seen the 300% increase in, in through home appreciation. So if you would have bought a house 30 years ago, you would, your house would be worth three times the amount then. Um, you know, that's just a couple, couple small things, but that, that alone would give somebody a really great sense of um, personal happiness and a sense of financial security, which I think goes hand in hand with uh, helping happiness. Sure. Sure. It makes sense. So, Okay, we're in an interesting interest rate world. It seems to be the buzzword. Mm -hmm. Have you, so let's talk about a couple of things industry wide because in this sort of interview process, you you would fit probably that financial wealth world, mm -hmm. right? So where do you see interest rates going and sort of leveling off in the near term, and then when do they start to sort of come back down not maybe yeah. necessarily to the historic two three percent rates we all hope we have locked in from the past five years right. or so but right. but where do, where does this sort of peak in your i mean you're pretty well read and in tune to this mm -hmm. industry and, and then where does it sort of level off at yeah well i mean as we all know for for one when the rates do ultimately come down which i truly believe will happen it's not going to all happen at once. You know, it'll be a, it'll probably be a slow trickle down. Um, with that being said, I I truly believe that we've if we haven't reached peak inflation, then we've come very close to it. Once we do, and the Fed realizes it and decides to slow down the rate hikes, reduce the amount of rate hikes, um, I think we'll see a really really nice rally in the markets. Everything is cyclical. We've seen that we've seen in the past, and normally at this part of the cycle with rising rates, um, as we head into a, I don't want to call it a recession, but maybe a slowdown, um, we normally in those times we normally see um, rates come down. So I believe that um, maybe first quarter, uh, maybe second, first or second quarter of next year, we'll see some relief. Um, we've even seen some relief in the last couple of weeks. Um, CPI inflation data came out recently with the first um, decent reading um, in the last while. So maybe we've already peaked. Um, so I'm really hopeful that we're going to see some stability and some uh, some reduction here soon. Okay. And is it pretty, it, does it happen pretty much in lockstep where the Fed raises rates and mortgage rates basically go up? So a great point. So, so there's no direct relationship with the federal funds rate and and mortgage rates. However, the policy, uh, the interest rates typically follow um, the Fed's policies. So, when rates are increasing, um, mortgage rates typically lag but do increase 
uh, in the same direction normally. So when you look at a historical federal funds rate uh, chart, you would see that uh, mortgage rates do generally uh, go hand in hand with, um, pretty with the federal funds rate. It correlates well. Yeah, and while not exact, um, it does correlate well. It's a Makes good indicator. Sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And we kind of lived through that. So right. what does that mean for home sales and prices, you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, intuitively i would think they both slow and come down but what what's yeah. your your experts kind of mm. saying in your personal experience you're yeah you're on the front lines sure sure so from an this year has been what a whirlwind um we saw interest rates go from call it three percent to almost seven percent um in in, a, in less than a year so what, what that does is it inherently just it really um reduces the amount that a that a buyer especially a first-time buyer um can either afford or qualify for or any type of combination between. So we've really seen affordability get hit hard. So normally in these times, we would see as a result, people can afford less, the market's going to slow down as a result, you'd see drop in home prices. But we're in a very unique time where nationally, we have we still have a huge shortage of homes on the market. So, so economically, if there's still, if there's low inventory, it's it's really keeping prices, keeping pre keeping prices high, or higher than we we might expect. So until we see some more inventory, these rising rates um, may not be as big of an effect as um, the lack of inventory on the market right now. Okay, so there's a sort of you know uh, a, a lack of inventory that should nationally right nationally. So we think that'll help prop up. Maybe not a soft right. landing, possibly from this. Correct, I agree. Yes, gotcha. Okay, that, that makes sense. I mean, you're seeing that even in the labor market, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, okay, the inevitability is people still are going to buy homes, right? People right. outgrow their home, have kids, retire, move, transfer, what have you, and. Of course, I've seen some scary stats of like a uh, three percent rate versus a six and a half or seven percent rate. That the same mortgage is like a right. you know, substantial difference. Substantial. So, what yeah. tricks in it, right? You're a lending guru expert. Mm -hmm. What tricks are at our disposal or at your disposal that you would recommend people who still need to buy or or, or want to buy and trying to sort of get around this. Oh, yesterday, my the house I'm selling is at three percent mortgage. I'm buying right. it. Six. It's hard to swallow, especially when markets down. So, help give some advice or sure. tricks or arrows in your yeah. Market. Well, a couple of things. So, we're we're starting to see an uptick um, in um, in adjustable rate mortgages. Um, we've talked about that before, where um, a rate a rate will be fixed for for a certain period of time, whether it's five, seven, or ten years, for example, and then the rate could adjust based off of market conditions. Um, up but what, or down can it adjust well, up correct it could down. theoretically it could could be could reduce absolutely if short-term rates are, are low then it could certainly go down um and there are are caps on them as well but um with that being said that the initial rate is is significantly lower at times than a fixed rate so with what we were just talking about where a refinance could be potentially be possible in the future some people are taking advantage of the arms at the adjustable rate mortgages as a um temporary solution um, where they feel like they can fi fix their rate down the road or very are very confident they can do so um these are more for for folks who have um a large down payment or significant equity because they are a little bit more of a, a risk a risk to a lender so um what's the other the, thing what's the sorry what's the difference in rate generally for like a five uh it, it depends maybe a percent or two, I would say, between and in, in anywhere in between. It really a lot of factors, but that's probably a general um, general right. number. The other thing that we're seeing is is called a something called a temporary buy down, um, where if somebody puts an offer on a home and they're able to negotiate um, some 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 assistance towards their closing costs, the seller can actually subsidize their rate, their interest rate, for a period of time. So, for example, if the prevailing market rate is seven percent today. If they are able to negotiate a, a buy down, they could negotiate it where the first year rate for the buyer would be 5%, the second year rate would be 6%, and then the third through the 30th rate would be the no rate, the 7% rate. There's no deferred interest. All, you're, 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 not, you're, you're not gaining interest or having your loan balance increase. 
It's a fully amortized loan. It just allows somebody to sort of grow into that payment. So we're seeing a lot of home sellers and home builders um, starting to subsidize um, with these types of, of programs. So what happens there? The home seller, you say, hey, look, I want to buy your house. I, instead of $30,000 off at closing or something, you'll they'll put some dollars that gets put aside to the lender and the lender exactly. says, hey, pay 5,000 bucks. And that means year one is 5%. Okay. Exactly. And and what's great is that in the next, again, assuming that maybe a refinance opportunity in the next couple of years, that allows them to never really pay that 7% rate in that example. because so they'll pay the five and maybe the six. And hopefully in that period of time, there will be an opportunity to, to, um, to improve their, their interest rates. Okay. So these are all ways to essentially say, Hey, how can I temporarily get a lower rate knowing that or believing that rates will drop at some point, may, again, maybe to and, five and percent even, or four and a half, and not all the right. way back down. But you can right. you, you can then and, refinance. And even, if, and even if they don't go go down, you're still at a fixed rate, as as they, in that example, seven percent. You know what your final um, worst case, um, so to speak, would be, and so you can plan accordingly. Right, and have some time to get there as well. Right. But you don't want to, of course, you know, just from an advice standpoint, you don't want to stretch somebody and say, hey, you're going to be able to improve these terms. You want to make sure they're comfortable now, um, working right. out their interests and making sure they're able to make these payments in the future. Yeah, that makes sense. It and makes we're sense. qualifying them off of the, the, the highest rate also. Okay, so good. So I wouldn't so have to them that. in that sense as well. Makes sense. All right. So leave us with your big tip of the day. Uh, what else okay. you want to, people to remember about uh, your message on advice? Sure. So there's a saying that I really, really like in today's market. It goes like this. Marry the house, date the rate, divorce your rent. All right. Mar yeah, like marry that. the house, <laughs> date the rate, divorce the rent. Got it. Spoken like a true ending expert. Hey, hey, hey. You're a guru, right? <laughs> No bias coming in. No. Uh, Matt, for anyone who is looking or curious about, uh, I know you put out some information that I get on a regular basis mm -hmm. with, a, you got a newsletter and how can they get in touch with you if they have mm -hmm. lending questions or needs or you sparked something interesting from them today. Why don't you share that for everyone today? Yes. Um, please visit my website. Uh, there'll be links, some links going around after this um, interview uh, where, um, you'll be able to get in contact with me. My website is um, www.apexhomeloans.com slash Matt-Lieberman. Um, all my contact information is on my website along with um, information on some of the programs that we offer. Um, so please feel free to reach out and contact me directly. Awesome. The man, the myth, the legend, folks. Matt Lieberman. Thanks for joining us, Matt. It's a pleasure. I appreciate your insight and help as always. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate you having me. Absolutely. I'm Andrew Rosen, President of Diversified. As always, stay wealthy, healthy, and happy. Take care, everyone.